Hello there. In this video, let's calculate the moment of inertia of a uniform spherical shell. So in this picture here, we have this spherical shell. It has infinitesimal thickness, right? There's no thickness to this uh, spherical shell at all. It's just a shell. It has some radius r and some mass m, and of course a uniform mass density. So the way that we're going to calculate this moment of inertia, and I'll go ahead and show a, a simpler picture here on the right, which we'll actually uh, use. The way that we're going to go about this is we're going to exploit our knowledge of moment of inertia of a simpler object. So what I'm suggesting here is, is that this spherical shell we can really think of as just a bunch of infinitesimal rings, right? All stacked on top of each other right we just stack a bunch of rings on top of each other in order to build this spherical shell and let me go ahead and remind us what the equation of uh, moment of inertia for a ring is i of a ring is going to be equal to simply the mass of the ring times its radius squared and we proved this in another video on this channel Okay, so we're going to exploit this fact, right, in order to make this cal calculation substantially easier. So let's go ahead and start just by simply recognizing that the total moment of inertia of my sphere, I, is going to be equal to just the sum over this sphere of all these infinitesimal, you know, uh, inertia elements, di. So I just have to sum together all of these rings moment of inertias together along this entire sphere. That's all that I'm doing, and it's infinitesimal, so it becomes in, you know, an integral. And what is, you know, each of these little di's going to be? Well, we recognize here that, you know, we just have to use this equation. So I'm going to go ahead and point out real quick that, you know, each of these rings is going to have some radius. I'll call that little r. Okay, and if we define things like this, then di is going to be little r squared dm. Awesome. Now, what is dm going to be? Because we know we're going to have to replace this dm, right? r is going to be some function of position, right? And dm, you know, is not, right? So we need to make our variable of integration match our integrand. So in order to rewrite dm, let's go ahead and remind ourselves about mass density. Sigma is the symbol we use for area mass density, and it is defined as, you know, dm per some dA, the amount of mass per some area element dA, right? So I can go ahead and rewrite dm as equal to sigma dA. We'll go ahead and think about the nature of our, you know, our, our area elements here in a second. For right now, let's go ahead and worry about sigma. Because I have a uniform uh, spherical shell, I can find the mass density simply by taking the total mass m of my shell divided by its area. What's the area of a, uh, of a spherical shell? 4 pi times its radius squared. Awesome. So let's go ahead and plug in what we have so far. So we have i is equal to the integral over our sphere of m over 4 pi r squared times r squared times dA. That's where we're at right now. All right, so the next step here, we have to actually think about what is, you know, the area that each of these rings occupies. Right? So this should be pretty easy because each of these rings, you know, if they have some radius r, what's this dimension here? Okay, well, this is just the circumference of a ring, right? So this is going to be 2 pi times little r. So we have this dimension here. Now we need this uh, dimension here. Let's go ahead and label this as dl, right? Like this is the slant height of this, uh, you know, of this portion of the sphere here, okay? So if we do this, what's dA going to be equal to, right? Well, it's simply going to be 2 pi r times dL, right? We just take our two dimensions and, you know, multiply them together to get our little area element. Perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and update, you know, our integral then. 
So we're going to have I is going to be equal to the integral over my sphere. And you know what? I'll just plug straight in and then we'll cancel terms out. So M over four pi R squared times R squared times two pi R D L. Okay. And we're already going to start to get some cancellation here. And of course, these R's are going to pair up and make an R cubed. I'm going to go ahead and pull my constant out of this integral. So I'm going to have m over 2r squared integral over my sphere of r cubed dl. All right, so you know we're, we're massaging this integral a little bit more. We still have a ways to go. r cubed and dl still aren't exactly compatible with each other. So we need to keep uh, working on this, right? All right, so I went ahead and cleaned up this picture a bit to make this uh, next part easier to, uh, to follow. So I want to rewrite R and DL in terms of, you know, some actual coordinates now, right? What coordinate system should we use? Okay, we should use spherical coordinates because it's really easy to express DL when we're using spherical coordinates. In other words, what I'm saying is, look, this point here, this is going to be at some radius R, and some angle theta, right? In order to sweep out this little arc here along this DL, right? All that we need to do, because R stays fixed, all that we need to do is just add some infinitesimal D theta here, right? Do you see that? And we just sweep out the arc, okay? So if that's the case, what is this arc length DL going to be? Well, DL is going to be equal to r d theta that's really easy okay so if we've rewritten dl in terms of theta we also need to rewrite our little r in terms of theta right so oh my goodness look we already have a triangle here right we have a triangle with some angle theta some hypotenuse capital r and this leg here little r so what's little r going to be? r is just going to be equal to capital R sine theta. Great. So let's go ahead and uh, grab these. Okay. And now we just have to substitute in, right? So I'm just pulling these over for our reference. And now we have everything in terms of, you know, one unified parameter theta here. Great. So I'm going to have m over 2r squared integral over my sphere of r cubed sine cubed theta times r d theta. Let's go ahead and get to canceling. Cool. So I have r squared over or r squared m over 2 integral sine cubed theta d theta and what about the boundaries of our integration where is theta going to range from okay so theta is going to start this is theta equals zero right theta equals zero and we're going to sweep out along our sphere pi radians right we sweep out over our sphere pi radians because at each of these angles we draw out a full ring so we only need to go just half of the sphere with our angle theta. Do you see that very clearly? Okay, and this definite integral here is very nice. It just gives us four thirds if we actually uh, compute this out. We could either do it by hand, use some trig identities, or just plug it into a calculator real quick. Whatever way, it's going to give us four thirds. And this four is going to cancel out with this two and we're going to be left with our final result. I of our sphere is equal to two thirds m r squared. Awesome. So the moment of inertia of a spherical shell is two thirds m r squared. Um, if you enjoyed this video, found it helpful, you know, let me know in the comments section and consider subscribing to the channel. I really love and appreciate, you know, hearing people getting involved on the, uh, on the channel. 
uh, fun stuff. Um, but anyways, other than that, thank you so, so much for watching.